It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, we are the Brilliant Idiots back for another week. Um, Andrew Schultz is absolutely on vacation. Um, Andrew fucked shit up and then he left. You know, he, he dropped his special... Show Saves America on Netflix, and then uh, he went on vacation to Hawaii for the rest of the year. So I'm not I'm not mad at him. So uh, I got uh, a couple of people who I respect so much. My my folks is in here. My man Wayno. What's good? What's good? What's up, y'all, man? And uh, Nyla is here. I don't I can't see it. Can you yeah, hear Nyla? I can hear and see you. Okay, I can, I I can see Nyla too. <laughs> All right, it must be my Wi-Fi then. But um, have have y'all seen Show to Special? Wayno, Nyla, I, any? Yeah, I saw it. You said, "What'd you think?" I, 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 did, uh, I need your your honest opinion. Um. Well, I only watched. I think it was. I don't. Is it in episodes? I watched like the first episode of it, and then um, I didn't go into anything else. But it was kind of like the same shit he does on on YouTube. Like I thought it was pretty cool. Like I told you, I like that when, when he talks about a bunch of various topics. It, it mm-hmm. seemed a little bit different than the YouTube one. I don't know if how how they recorded it or not, but like it's it's pretty much the same thing he does on YouTube. But I, I thought it was dope. Yeah, just longer. Nyla, what do you see? Nyla ain't seen nothing. Now, what, what do you watch, Nyla? What, what, what content do you take I watched the Kevin Hart one. Oh, you don't support white people. I said that or you said that? That's what it is. I said it. Well, listen, the reason I wanted y'all here today, I mean, for a number of reasons, a, a bunch of things that we can talk about, but um, I was really thinking about, like, uh, people's hip hop list. You know what I'm saying? Like this is the end of the year where, you know, everybody comes out with their best albums of the year list or their best artists of the year. And, you know, our, our good brother, uh, B dot, um, the B stands for biased. Okay. He, <laughs> he, 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 he put out, he put out his list. I don't have his list in front of me right now. You, anybody got his list? Uh, yeah. Pull, bring pull it. Up bring list. It and, 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 Here's the thing. I'm not upset at B Dot's list. You know, B Dot is one of those people that I literally talk to every day because 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 of, of the group chat. And mm-hmm. I'm not mad at B Dot's list because it's his list. But there's one thing I want all of us to start doing when we make our list. Just say that this is our favorite albums of the year, or say that this is our favorite artists of the year i think when you cast blanket statements and you say this is the best album of the year or this is the best artist of the year that's where the problems come in personally okay there it goes so so b dot put uh mvp 10 best rappers of 2020 freddie gibbs number one conway the machine number two Benny the Butcher, number three. Russ, number four. Big Sean, number five. Little Baby, number six. Nas, number seven. Drake, number eight. Little Wayne, number nine. Stove God, Cook, number 10. His criteria is based on skill, performance, and presence. Nyla, what do you think? I'll start with you. Um, Yeah, nah. The fact that he got Little Baby at number six is disrespectful. And Little Baby's easily top three and not three. And not two either. I really don't like the fact that he got... Conway the Machine as number two. <laughs> I just think it just doesn't even make any sense. Um, based on skill, performance, and presence, I don't really understand, I guess, performance and presence for half of these artists. And I never even heard of... I never even heard of... Stove God. Huh? I said you never Stove heard of Stove God. God. Cooks? I never heard of him. <laughs> when I saw the list first, I'm like, this this can't be right. <laughs> because I, it's artists on here I never even heard of. Um, I am happy that Russ is on there. That's fair. Drake. All right. Wayne. Uh, Let's talk about Wayne, actually. Nah. No, no. Because I really I, love Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne is a goat. But the best Wayne verse that I heard from him in years, years, is the verse that he did with Freddie Gibbs. Like, the feature he gave Jack Harlow was trash. He's been giving out mad trash features. So the fact that Wayne is on this top 10 list. I mean, I guess. I think a lot of this is just out of respect because those are his friends and he grew with them. (laughs) (laughs) Wayne, what do you think, my brother? So, all right. So the list, 
I'm not mad. Other than Stove, I've been hearing, I heard about Stove God prior to him being on the list. Like somebody sent me his project. I still haven't gotten a chance to listen to it. But I respect everybody that's on this list. Now, my biggest problem with B-Dot on this list is where Little Baby is at. I think, like, for, like in 2020, for you to have Little Baby 6 on anything, I'm talking about anything regarding music right now, especially rap, is ri- ridiculous. I think that Freddie Gibbs, that's a good place. I think that all these people deserve, well, I don't know if they deserve the certain sp- sp- spaces, but like Conway, I feel like Conway... Yeah, as far as skill, he's one of the best. But like Nyla said, performance and presence. And when we was on Clubhouse, I kept saying that to be that like, what do you mean about performance and presence? Because if we're talking about presence, Little Baby has the biggest presence in hip hop. Like yeah, I feel said, like he said, presence was relevancy. That's what he told me. That's what I'm saying. Relevancy, like, and, and so this is my my problem that I have where you know I feel like. New York gets this cloud that we don't love or respect the South, specifically Atlanta, and that's bullshit. Like, I've y'all loved that. Y'all, y'all don't respect nothing except New York. That's bullshit because York, I've, I've been, been in a bubble way before Corona. It has, but I will tell you for myself, I'm a person who has family. My family's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. I got cousins that live all in Atlanta. The for, for where I found out about 3 6 Mafia was my homegirl had cousins in Memphis, used to come back with the tapes. So when I see Little Baby in a space like that, I'm like, nah, y'all niggas is bugging. I felt like Little Baby should have been nominated for a Grammy only because that would make other people who are biased give him his respect as a rapper because he has the best rap album to me. I feel like he has the best rapping album because it covers everything. Um, True. Now, now, I feel like Little Wayne shouldn't be on the list. I, I feel I, like certain I artists agree. like... I, I feel like Drake shouldn't be on the list. And that's not not no slight to Drake, but I feel like Drake took a year. I, honestly, even him dropping that tape, he, the nigga took a year off. He still took a year off and from dropping Dr. that tape. And demo is just um, really not a great tape. Like, it's not. It, it, it's not, but I just feel like like him, I feel like Nas shouldn't be. I feel like if we're going to make these lists, these lists should be for what's current, which not just young, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to exclude the niggas that's older, but like, it should be what's current across the board. And I feel like, Freddie, Freddie Gibbs should be on there. I even feel like Rush should be on there. I feel like Conway, yeah, because he dropped a great album, but it's Little Dirk should be on this list. Polo G should be on this list. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Polo G is one of the most slept on young niggas out here. You know what I mean? Like, he should be on this list. It's just, it, it, like you said, it should be B. Dot's just his list. Like, his favorite list. And listen, that's why, you know, I, I forgot to say that we start the show off with a positively brilliant, what a fucking idiot. This is one of those things that can go on either one because it's positively brilliant the way B. Dot got everybody talking. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But, you know, this list is pretty idiotic. You know what I mean? Especially <laughs> when you say, and, I, and, I, and that's my man, I got, but especially when you say based on skill, performance, and presence. And I told B-Dot, if it's just based on skill, just rapping, totally understand everybody that's on that list. But when you talk about presence and you tell me that presence means relevancy, there's no way you can have a 2020 list without the baby. There's the no way you can have a, there's no way you can have a 2020 list without Meg the Stallion. Right. There's no way you can have a 2020 list where, like you said, Lil Baby is anything other than in the top two. And there's no way you can have a 2020 list without Roddy Rich. That's it's a impossible. fact. It's impossible if it's based on skill, performance, and presence. If you're being objective. Now, like I said, if it's your favorite list, your list is going to look like B Dot. I would like for B Dot to explain himself based off of his you know, measurements because performance wise, like what performance did Drake, <laughs> Wayne, um, Stove God, I still don't even know who he is. Like what performance did they do? Like Meg's performances was everywhere. Her YouTube stuff, the BET uh, performance, the graduation stuff. Like there's artists out here really being creative and they didn't even make the list. Well, right. B-Dot's not even talking about that kind of performance. Yeah, he's not. Him, I, he said he's talking about the way you perform on records. Well, like your flow, okay. your delivery. For but me, with, once again, with that, yeah, you can't leave Roddy Rich off. Roddy so Rich's performance my, is amazing on records. My biggest problem with the whole Roddy Rich shit, and I feel like Roddy Rich is getting unfairly shitted on because he dropped the album this the first week of December. It's not a 2019 album. That shit is not a 20. He dropped his album. It like, it, he no, dropped his album. The box was hot for months prior to. The, the box was like the, one of the biggest record. It, it, to me, it's, it's still the biggest record of 2020. But it's like because the pandemic happened, people forgot that Roddy Rich actually dropped a great body of work. It performed, it, but he not he not saying it like that. But it performed very well. 
it was everywhere. He had one of the biggest records. He had one of the biggest presents. Shit, not even the box. What, what's the other drink? Um, balling. The rock star. Oh, balling. Not balling. With, with DJ Mustard, even though it's DJ Mustard's record, that shit still held 2020 down. So it's like, how does Roddy Rich not make a, a record? And I feel like I would not make a list. And I feel like a lot of people will putting him to the side because he dropped his album the first week of December. That makes no sense to me. Why is B-Dot's criteria different than all award shows? Every award show, if your album comes out in December, they will uh, reward you the very, like the next year. Like, because it's a cutoff date, right? It's a cutoff date. With the baby. Actually, Roddy Rich's album won't be eligible until the next Grammys, if I'm not mistaken. That's crazy, because look, but think about this, right? I mean, just growing up, every year when Jay-Z dropped in December, Shit, everybody wrote his album into the next summer. Like Absolutely. Like his his album came out in the in the, the fourth quarter to hold down the next year until the next fourth quarter. So I just don't get how it, Roddy Rich is not well, considered for anything. Compared to when Jay Z well, not that Jay Z still not dropping albums, but compared to back then, we process music so much faster. Not only just music though, we pass we process news, we process like right. just everything yeah. so much faster. So for that, it kind of makes sense as to why it was forgotten about but you know for this to be his job he violated <laughs> yeah, B-Dot, listen b dot's gonna contradict himself next year i'm gonna tell you why because i saw his top albums of 2020 list and he put jack harlow on there oh, mm. man. jack harlow's album just came out like last exactly. week right? exactly exactly so next year this is what's gonna happen jack's album is gonna bubble for the next six seven months right jack's gonna be hot and then next year, B-Doc going to try to put Jack Harlow on his best rappers of 2020 list. And we got to say, nope, he put that fucking album out in December. The same shit you held Roddy Rich <laughs> to, you got to hold Jack Harlow to. I already see him about to set himself up to contradict himself. Yeah, he is. I, they was already getting at him about that already. So, you know, it, it's, it's definitely going to happen. But but I don't want to pick apart B-Doc's list. What I want to ask y'all is, because I don't have best artists. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have favorite artists of 2020. I just do albums. I like albums that I fucking mm. What were y'all top albums of 2020? Hmm. Um, I say I start off a uh, little baby's album, my turn. Um, mm. 21 Savage, you know, uh, same Savage Mode 2, same, yeah, Savage Mode 2. Um, Polo G, his album, uh, Dirk's album. Um, shit. trying to think the baby, I think the, the baby did better on the deluxe. I like Lil Uzi's deluxe as the. The uh, Eternal Take Deluxe, I like the Deluxe more than I like the actual Eternal Take. Um, damn. And see, that's I the other think. thing, too. A lot of those albums, you, you, Polo G, I haven't listened to. Okay. Go Uzi, I haven't listened to. Somebody else, Lil Durk, I didn't hear Lil Durk's album, right? How you so ain't hear like, these albums, Charlie? I, that's what I'm saying. I haven't even heard these projects, but that's why, that's another thing, too. How can you really give an objective opinion about these that's albums so and, and say what is the best if you didn't listen to everything? You'd have to listen to everything to give that opinion. I know B-Dot ain't listen to all of them. <laughs> well, he says, and I quote, I listen to more rap music than the average pu- person, so yeah, but like from he what, lives and dies. From, like from what decade, B-Dot? <laughs> well, um, <Okay>. also, <laughs> now, also, I got a Conway's album, too. Conway's album, From King to I God. Like, I feel like album. that album is hard. Like I feel like that album is really hard. Um, it, It's a lot. You, you know it's crazy? It's hard for me to even remember how many albums come out because so many come out so fast. Like, I I really be having to look back like, oh, that was this year? Like, yeah. For me, Nyla. I really, really loved number one Lil Baby album. I loved Cash Page album. I loved uh, Coiler Ray's mixtape. I loved Spillage Village. Love that project. Um, I loved... That was so good. I like Smino's She Already Decided mixtape. Uh, what else did I listen to a lot? I don't know. Once I pick my faves, I just kind of keep them in rotation type thing. <laughs> yeah. And see what I'm saying? Like, once again... I listen to Spillage Village because of Nyla. They dope. No, that's mm-hmm. Earth Games. Earth Games and Spillage Village, yeah. That's yeah, it's okay. all of them together. Cool. They dope. But I didn't hear a lot of those projects that she named. And that's what that goes back to what I said. We gotta stop saying what we are generalizing well, saying this is the best and just say this is my oh, yeah. favorite. These are Great. my top albums. So wait, I gotta I can't leave without mentioning we we can't leave it without Meet the Woo. Meet the Woo too is my favorite yeah, pop smoke project. Yeah, this yeah year. long year. Yeah, it, it felt yo, <laughs> Nyla, It felt like it was two years ago, like for real. But Pop Smoke, and I feel like Pop Smoke. You know, unfortunately, he passed away. But I told, I said this to beat out too. Like 
I don't think there's no list you could put out and deny his presence, even with him leave him being gone. Like his presence is everywhere un- to where you seeing kids in Africa will walk in. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I think no, like, pop- every guy and girl went and got the braids. <laughs> like right. that the, was the yeah, style yeah. to have the pop smoke it. braids. <laughs> The pop smoke bridge, yeah, and, he sold, and, it, and he sold a lot of records. Yeah, weekends album too. I think and weekends album. Aside is from like selling records, just the fact that like he passed away and the controversy on his album artwork, like the fact that it was like a general population involved in the process of his of his album being done, like says a lot. Yeah. Does pop does pop smoke um is that album as successful if 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 he doesn't tragically get killed? If it, is it still? As successful as it was, I don't. I honestly, I don't think it is. I, 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 and I think to me, he was my favorite new artist. I don't think it is. I, of course, death brings more attention to whatever's going on. You know, King Von passed away and got a million followers the next week. You know what I'm saying? After he passed, Jada um, said it the best. You know, rappers you get know, better get promotion. Get better promotion. But um, it, it, I, I don't think it performs the same way. But I. It is what it is, and I just can't negate the influence. I, and people might get at me for saying this, but I feel like for the kids in New York, that's this generation's Biggie. Yeah. I feel like the, the, the impact that he had, like the impact, Biggie died when I was like 13, going on 14, and that was everything to us in the parties, summertime, cookouts, everything. And I feel like Pop Smoke's presence for these kids of today is the same as Biggie's was for I me when I was I think album sales-wise, maybe it wouldn't have been as successful, but for him, it, it just would have been like another pinnacle. Like he would have kept growing because he was definitely next to blow. Yeah, I mean he was doing a lot right. of stuff. He he's starring in that and um in that Eddie Hong movie charity. Yeah, like he was getting all the yeah that Eddie Hong movie Boogie that's coming out. You know, Pop Smoke starred in that. I got I got a role in that too. That's I mean that's the only reason I knew he was in it because when I shot for it like a while ago he was he was what you role you acting that Charlotte? Yeah, who you playing? <laughs> Are you playing as the dude that's where the money resides? <laughs> no, <Nah>, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away. I'm not playing myself, though. I tell you that the movie is about basketball. You a coach? If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> well, no, Lala, what can you see Charlotte Bay doing with basketball? <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm definitely. I'm definitely. I'm definitely not a player. I'm definitely not a player. But you could be a bird. Um, you could get a little birdie roll off. You know what I mean? Drug dealer support in the. I could definitely get a birdie roll off. I would love to do something like that. But now I think Pop Smoke might have still had success so. though. I yeah. think because because he 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 had that presence. You know what I'm saying? He had like a real star presence and he already had the biggest market in the country behind him, which is yeah. New York. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think New York has been waiting for a, a a champion that they can get behind. You know what I mean? Like um they haven't had that in a while. Like like Cardi might have been the last one. Um probably Nikki before her, but let's be real. They don't get behind women the way well, they get behind men. They don't. They don't. I, but New York, I feel like New York ain't get behind him neither. And I feel like I, I feel like Boogie was a champion for us, but I feel like as far as the city, they didn't get behind him the way he should. Like you know, it wasn't a movement. Pop Smoke yeah. got a movement. You know what I mean? That whole Wu thing and every like it's a movement. I don't know. I don't know. I was I was new to New York when A Boogie had got hot and I felt like it was forced on me. Like, I, I didn't have a choice but to, like, A Boogie because they just kept playing the records. And even at events, like, A Boogie would show up and bring his whole hood. It felt like a movement to me. But it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, really. I say, as impactful as Pop Smoke because, like I said, people was trying to dress like Pop, talk like Pop, <laughs> you know, yeah. do everything. He had the full effect. It's actually Woo Wednesday right now, too, you know? <laughs> really? Is, yeah, now nah, that's what the kids, that's what the meme kids call it. Every day they call, every Wednesday they call it Woo Wednesday. So they post a bunch of memes to pop smoke. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Listen, my, my favorite albums of the year, Biddy the Butcher, Burden of Proof. Um, Conway the Machine from a King to a God. Uh, Nas is King Disease. Um, Run the Jewels 4, which I don't hear nobody mentioning for whatever reason. Run the Jewels 4 was amazing. 21 Savage, Savage Mode 2. Uh, T.I. Libra. Um, I fuck with Big Sean Detroit too. I thought that project was dope. Royce the Five Nine Allegory, Lil Baby My Turn, and y'all motherfuckers really sleeping on the City Girl City on them. Okay, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if the if the streets was open and it wasn't a pandemic, the City Girls would be the hottest 
rap group, Honestly, period, and the hottest female rappers well, out, period, right now. Just say, I want to talk about Big Sean's album, and I got to talk about City Girls. So the City Girls project, yes, was good, but it, and, and it still did well, even though we're in a pandemic, one. And then two, it's something about when the City Girls come on in the club, it's like the whole energy shifts. <laughs> like, every girl yeah. who wasn't dancing yeah. starts dancing. It's, it's crazy, so... Because they speak to your inner hood rat. All that ratchet shit y'all really want to do. All y'all women that want to be like really about fucking these niggas and taking their money and scared to do it. They are. It's, it's the same thing with gangster rap, right? When you hear some gangsters talking some real gangster shit, as a man, you like, oh shit, you want to live that life vicariously yeah, through them. City Girls music is definitely, is definitely like made for outside and outside only like yes. you, you you have to experience it like you have to experience it and i do agree like like when they music come on it does make like the the lady that's she's trying to pass the bar test she's gonna be acting <laughs> up that night like you know what i mean like she gonna be going on and I feel sorry for them because they didn't get the experience that like JT just came home. So she ain't get the experience being on the road, touring. She ain't get the experience hearing her records in the club in that way. Cause they had some joints on City on Lock that would have went off this they summer. Somebody they should got leaked. they should got a uh, leak too though. Remember, like they should have got leaked like a like a week early or like a, a, f- a few days early. So that hurt them a little bit as well. I don't believe about leaking in 2020. I just don't you know? leak in 2020. No. You saying that man. <laughs> they put that out. Somebody forced that. Somebody, somebody in the team put that out. I think so. Maybe, maybe, but getting back to Big Sean's album, because people are saying that this is Big Sean's best album. Do you think this is Big Sean's best album? No. Nah, it's not his best album. Yeah. It's good, though. It's really good, but it's not his best yeah. album. It's good, but yeah, it's definitely What would y'all say is his best album? Because to me, I feel like this album, I feel like Big Sean makes the same type of albums every album. Mm. His best album to me was the one that had um, Bigger Than Me on there. Uh, what was um, that Dark album? Side, uh, Dark Side Paradise, yeah. Dark Side Paradise. That, that's, that's, to Dark me, that's Paradise. his best body of work. It is. I, I think that's his best body of work. I think it's his most honest body of work as well. I feel like one thing think- about his music is definitely always honest. Like, this project is very honest also. I like where he's at. You know, I can grown yeah. i like him talking about therapy fighting his demons like where he's at with his relationship with janae i mean the whole package beautifully beautifully done but as far as like the album and co- and i want big sean to get his albums i want all the young ogs in that class to get their flowers like wale still need to get his flowers cole got his Drake got his kendrick meek got his with championship i want all of them to get their flowers but i do feel like I don't know. I feel like Big Sean still doesn't have his like Forest Hill drives or his championship. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. I, yeah, I don't. I don't. I, well, I think Dark Dark Side Paradise. I think that that was like the closest hmm, to, to me. That was kind of that's the closest to it. But you know, a lot of times, shit, it, it might not happen for everybody. We got to accept that as well. You know what I mean? Well, no, it, it, well, even when we say that, wait, what do we mean when we say that? Because I think sometimes you got to appreciate where you are. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I think that some, sometimes you look at Drake, you look at Kendrick, you look at Cole, and you say, I want that kind of success, but that may not be the success that 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 that's destined for you. But what's wrong with being Big Sean? What's wrong with being Wale, consistently gold artists? Nothing, nothing wrong at all. I'm just saying it's like when we think about a moment, I th- it's a lot of factors that leads into Meek's championships. It's a lot of things that leads into Drake's take care. It's a lot of things that leads into Kendrick's... Um, damn or even a uh, good kid mad city it's like it's a certain energy that leads into that shit and i feel like you know with with big sean he takes a lot of time off and he's been honest about letting people know like yo i was really going yeah. through something and that's mm-hmm. why it's being received a certain way but i don't know if he has like if that energy is going to be received for him to make a body of work that everybody's going to like i feel like big sean is a great artist but he's still some shit that's like oh you're like you got to be a fan of that nigga like in order to really get it like, you got to be a yeah. hardcore fan yeah. of him to really get it. I agree. Like, dots aren't, for some reason, the dots haven't completely connected for Big Sean because I don't even think people respect Big Sean as a lyricist no. the way that they should. I think Big Sean has been one of the top three lyricists. And he's dangerous. He's dangerous. For a long time. Yes. Big Sean yeah. says shit that I don't hear nobody else saying. That boy be snapping. But for whatever reason, he don't get that that credit even as just being a dope-ass yeah, rapper. I'm going to just blame yeah. Kanye. Anybody on good music that I'd be like, it's Kanye for it. You think it's Jay's fault? You think it's Jay's fault? Jay's fault. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. I, I mean, think he played that, a big role. 
I think Big Sean suffers from what guys like um, Charles Barkley, Carl uh, Malone, um, those guys, Patrick Ewan. I think he suffers from what those guys suffered from. He just happens to be in an era where some would say the the, the greatest of all time is right. Like mm. like you would have to put Drake and Kendrick in like the greatest of all time combo, right? Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So when you play in that era, when you came out in that class with with goats of that caliber, I'm and even even say, Cole, you know what I mean? Cole got Cole. Yeah. Cole got rings, but he, I, I mean, I don't nah, put Cole, Cole one of the level. greatest. He's one of he the is. greatest. He is. I don't put him on the level of Drake and Kendrick. I don't even put Drake on the level of Kendrick. But wait, 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 wait. I, you don't put you don't put Cole on it. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You don't put no. Cole on the level of uh, Drake and Kendrick. Why not? Not not skill like wise. Music. Not That's skill wise. Like his music, not you haven't listened. I, Cole's dope. Nah, Cole could rap. Cole could rap. Cole is amazing. I just think, like, listen, and I'm not saying anything, I'm not taking anything away from him. He's a Hall of Fame all star. All I'm simply saying is it's a difference between what a Kendrick does and what everybody else does to me. But guess what? Some people may say that about Drake. Some people might put Drake the way I hold Kendrick and say everybody else is after him. But my point with saying that is those two guys are such goats that they make everybody else look almost normal. Mm. You know what I mean? I get where you're going. Charles Barkley, looks, Charles, you Barkley looks, Charles Barkley looks normal compared to a Michael Jordan. It's hard you to tell. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. It's hard to tell kids about Charles Barkley. Like I be, t- I was a kid when Charles Barkley was won the MVP, and niggas be like, they be like him, like really, like that. You had to see it, that, and that's why I tell a lot of kids about Jordan. Like you had to see that shit. You know what I mean? You might well, you not get it watching the, clips. Well, no, nah, they they got it because of the Last Dance. Yeah, yeah. I think last the Last Dance, dance showed him. The last day, so but but if you think about that, right? Think about all of the great players that are first ballot Hall of Famers who never got rings because Michael Jordan existed in that era. Yeah, that's Yo, a fact. Let, 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 let's talk about Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen is absolutely positively a top fifty greatest player of all time. He's incredible. Michael Jordan probably doesn't do what he does without Scottie Pippen. That's a fact. Scottie Pippen don't even get his just due because he played next to the greatest of all time. And I think guys like Big Sean suffer from being in that era. When yeah. you gotta play with the Drakes and the Coles and the Kendricks. That's, that's all. That's a fact. It don't make it don't make Sean a way a Wale any less whack. I mean, any less dope. They're dope. Yeah. They not whack at all. Yeah, Wale like I like what Nyla said. Like well, Wale, I, Wale is so special, and I feel like a lot of times his him being so passionate comes off sometimes as arrogance. It also comes off as him being a dickhead or an asshole, and that's not the case. I feel like he's just very passionate because. He's like the nigga that wasn't one of the lottery draft. He was a lottery draft pick in rap, but like he's not projected to be as good as he really is. I think niggas sleep on his skill a lot, yo. It's yeah. disgusting. Like Wale I is one. I think he's one of the best. He dropped the EP real. this year too. That was tough. And it was right on time. Mm-hmm. It was on what? point about like the um, police brutality we were going through. Like the shit was fire. I love Wale, and not because I'm from the DMV. Like the nigga is just generally great. And you yeah. gotta salute Wale because Wale ain't even from this class. Wale's actually from the class ahead of them. Wale's from the Lupe Fiasco, Kid Cudi. Nah, he's yeah, from the Drake he's class. class. You remember? He's from the Drake class. Yeah. He's you from think the Drake so? class. He is. You remember it was the, for GQ Man of the Year. Drizzy oh, Cudi yeah, and me. Like, all on the washing machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, from yeah, that yeah, class. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Drake, you're right, Drake you're just, right. you know what I mean? Drake, that nigga yeah, went out this right. atmosphere with it, but he's from that class for sure. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second, pay some bills, man. Um, Tis the season to have a hard dick, just like every other season, okay? And there's a way to guarantee that, and that's with Blue Chew. You got to give your lady the night of her life, the weekend of her life, the weeks of her life, the years of her life, and Blue Chew is the way to do that. Same active ingredients that's inside Cialis or Viagra, but it's the chew, baby. And that's what we're doing over here, delivering the best dick of our days. And the way that you get that is you go to bluechew.com, okay? You go to bluechew.com. I want to be very intentional about what I say here. You go to bluechew.com and you get it for free. All you got to do is pay five dollars shipping if you use our promo code idiots that's bluechew.com use our promo code idiots 
and you will get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. Best stick of your life. Best stick she's ever had. You need to impress that new one or you need to impress that old one. It really doesn't matter. You're going to do it with the chew. Bluechew.com. Make sure you use that promo code idiots. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because um, you need some freshness in your life. And HelloFresh is going to deliver that. That's right. We're going to get fresh pre-measured ingredients with mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Listen, you're hanging out at home. It's the holidays. You might as well whip up some good stuff. You can do it with HelloFresh. They have convenient, no contact delivery right to your doorstep. Easy home cooking with the fam. All right. The recipes are easy to follow. Simple steps, pictures to guide you along the way. Over 90% of the ingredients are sourced direct, directly from growers to ensure peak flavor and ripeness. HelloFresh offers more than 20 chef crafted delicious options every week to help you break out of your recipe rut. Try new things and make any night feel special. Fellas, you want to spice it up for the ladies? Ladies, you want to switch it up for the dudes? HelloFresh offers all of these. There's something everyone will enjoy. Skip those grocery store lines, okay? You are reducing your food waste by at least 25% when you're using HelloFresh. They deliver the pre-portioned ingredients so you're not overbuying, which is a burden on the planet. So this is great for the planet. It's great for you. Everybody loves it. What you're going to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash Idiots80, okay? Then you are going to use the code Idiots80 and you're going to get $80 off, including free shipping. That's crazy. 80 bucks off and including free shipping. The code is Idiots80, HelloFresh.com slash Idiots80. You get those $80 off your order and including the free shipping. Now let's get back to the show. What do you, did, did y'all like Cuddy's Man on the Moon 3? I didn't, I didn't listen, listen to it either. So, so listen to it. this is my thing with Cuddy, man. While Cuddy is... You know he's 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 great, and he had a to me the first man on the moon is classic. I feel like a lot of the people overrate him on a lot of shit. I feel like he's overrated really? on a lot of shit. In yeah, I do. I really believe. And re- explain. So so this is the thing. Like I don't like. All right, I understand that there's a whole class of emo kids that like was in a dark place and all that shit, and his music means the best to them. And for for the first man on the moon, like when that shit came out. That shit was hard. Like, I was sleeping on him then. I feel like it's a classic and all that. But as far as his skill set and all of that after, they, I think that he gets, I, like, I think he get a lot of credit for shit that, I don't know, man. I just don't think he's as good as people make him out to be. And he's talented. I'm not saying the nigga not talented, but I just feel like they be putting him on this pedestal that I don't think he's on. Me personally. I don't, a, I don't, man. I don't think, I don't think it has to do with his skill set though. I think, I think it's for what you just said. It's the way he makes people feel. Like, he provides a soundtrack and, you know, for those emotions that a lot of people may be going through. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's that's cool. But, like, when we're talking about, we, we compare, like, this is the thing, man. We compare people based on how good they are. That's just what we debate about. Like, we we the, the, we compare people based on, is this nigga better than him or is he as good as him? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, people get wrapped up into shit like you just said with Big Sean. But I feel like with Cuddy. I feel like he's good, but I feel like a lot of the shit that the way that they perceive him to be, like to me, I, it's just not the same for me. And it just might be I'm not. That's it. not like my you miss the curve. Sometimes you just miss the feeling that somebody get. Like how people love Travis Scott and the whole rodeo thing. I missed it. Like I don't get it. People be like, you don't understand. Like I caught on to uh, Kid Cudi, which is why I said in recent years maybe I would feel like you. But prior, like when I was in high school and shit, that was everything, and I wasn't. A- See, I wasn't an emo kid, but I felt it. I fucked with him. But now in recent years, it's kind of like how I said earlier with Wayne, like Wayne drop. It's like, all right, like, okay. Like, I understand what he built, but like when Cuddy dropped his first album, I was like 26. You know what I'm saying? When he dropped his first album, like, it's, it's, it was it was great. I, that album, his first album is great. I'm just talking about like everything post that. It's not, and I'm not just saying it have to be that in order for him to be good. I'm just saying like the way that people be praising him is like this god of whatever. I don't. Well, who do you compare him to? Because he's not like I don't consider him, even though he's in that time frame. I don't consider his competitions like Cole, Drake, Sean, and them. I don't either. I mean, I, I, that's the thing. Though. I don't think you compare Cuddy to nobody. Like, I understand what Wayno's saying, but I don't think people look at Cuddy 
and hold him in that high regard because of his skill set. I really think it's because of what he talks about, what's the content of his music and the way he makes people feel. You know what I mean? Like when somebody gives you that soundtrack to whatever it is you may be going through, man, you love them in a different way. Like Mary J. Blige, Mary J. Blige, not the greatest yeah. singer in the that's world, but man, right. she provided the soundtrack for heartbreak. That's a fact. So you that's, a fact. You know, that's a fact. That's a fact. I did. I was riding the man on the moon too. And I've been kind of depressed the past couple of days too. So when I was listening to the man on the moon too yesterday, I was loving it. That beautiful trip, the shit, the tequila shots. I'm a tequila drinker. I had some tequila last night. The, the city got on there called Damaged. I like, I like this. I like, Wait, I like the vibe of it. All right, so show or lit. Cause that makes a difference too. That makes my heart. That makes a difference. I was sober. I was sober. Right, so I was, I was look, look, so, all right. Around this time, when Cuddy dropped his first album, I was totally against that whole, like, I didn't understand traumas and depression. I didn't understand that shit. It's like, you be depressed. And they, I, I come from the era of, you depressed, nigga, get over that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, <laughs> we that's all do. Come, yeah. Right? So, like, I was kind of against a lot of that moping, sad shit. So, it don't, a lot of the music doesn't affect me the same way. Now, even I, I've been depressed and like, the shit I be depressed over, I'm going to listen to Jeezy before I listen to Jeezy has gotten me through some tough times. <laughs> You feel hey. me? Like Jeezy got my man, my man, my man is in is in the feds, and I'm doing whatever I can to put a couple dollars on his books. That's that's my depression. How I've I've dealt with it. So I I get where Cuddy comes from, but how it's delivered for me is not the you know same. What? I'm effect. actually not mad at that statement at all. There's, you know, there's two different types of ways that people <laughs> want to go about handling things. I feel like you know Charlemagne is very evolved. <laughs> you know, when it comes to like spirituality very. and things like that, so we don't mind putting on a Cuddy and connecting whereas i feel like right. the average black man is gonna do the same thing he's gonna put on g he's gonna put on Benny. <laughs> they're gonna put on you know things that they can relate to not everybody can relate to cutting no right. nah, listen i fuck with all of that like I, I i do it the same way but sometimes you want somebody to tap into your exact emotions Mm-hmm. Like when Kid Cudi's rapping about, you know, I feel like I'm being I'm I'm trapped in my head right now. Like that is exactly the emotion that you, that that you may be going through. And I think but he I think taps into that. Like so dives, I ain't, like dives into it. It's like more of a facing it where you know, other artists yeah. is more of a just making you feel better, like keep it pushing. But I, I mean, I, I do think that um, I think Cudi's one of those people who don't get his 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 flowers the way he should. I think he does from the general public. What? No, no, he, Nigga, no, no, what? no, he does. The general, he does from the general public. They love him. Like I got, I know. You mean in the game, like, like in media and all that shit. In the media, yeah. like, like they should, he should be on that three headed monster, right? When you talk about Cole, I mean, Kendrick, he was, but you Drake. gotta remember, like, so when we talk about Cole, Kendrick, and Drake, think about the consistency and in, in their know. runs. I think that, yeah, you know, huh? just saying, uh-huh. yeah, Kanye. You said who? Cuddy, Sean, yeah. Tiana. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but remember Cuddy at that time too, he also was very vocal about his um problems that he was facing with drugs and all of that, why he wasn't so as so focused on on music and just depression. So I like, I ain't knocking him at all. I think that the nigga's one of the most talented dudes to ever do it. But at the same time, I, I, I think that it goes into the run you have. Cause end of the day, bro, niggas just want music. You know, now That's we start getting into people's lives and all that, but we really just want the music. So it's like when we say, All right, he did this one. And it's spaced out in between there. Eh. Then he does another one. A, a three hot album every 10 year average ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm with you. That's why I give Kendrick all the props in the world because Kendrick don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. Kendrick don't give a fuck. Kendrick ain't one of these guys that's giving y'all songs every week. He's not trying to be in the news. He don't got his publicist working overtime to leak stories. None of that. Kendrick is just giving y'all these albums but, and that's it. But every time he dropped, he never dropped something that make niggas say, oh, nah, I ain't. Like, it, it, to me, Kendrick, every, every album that he's dropped has done something. Like, you remember that time. Every time that he's put out an album, you remember exactly where you were, where you heard it, how it was affecting people at the shows, how it was affected in the media. Like, every time. I mean, he's four for four, if you ask me. He's four for four, and The Pimper Butterfly is the second best album of the last decade. And the first was My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy so- by Kanye. You said to wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You said to Pimple Butterfly is the second best album of the decade. The, pa- the last decade, from twenty ten to twenty twenty, a hundred. The second 
best the album. Second best nah, album I'm not of giving, the last decade. I'm not giving Pepper that Butterfly is incredible. It is like, incredible. And, but. And, 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 when, and when people go back now and listen to it, like he literally uh, re sparked. Because you know, Wayne, you, you, you're you not as old as me, but you come from that era. You remember when there was socially conscious Absolutely. black music, right? Absolutely. Like Fight the Power by Public Enemy, Absolutely. all of that type of stuff like that. Kendrick brought that back into the mainstream, I think. I think Kendrick and I think um a few songs off Watch the Throne album. Mm. I, I feel like I, I, I agree. The thing is, is that I just feel like Damn, Damn has a more of a, how can I say? Damn, I feel like Damn delivers it a little bit better. Like th- th- everything that you just said, he just delivers it a, a different way than To Pimple Butterfly. I feel like t- when he did To Pimple Butterfly, a lot of people wasn't ready for it. That's why it's not received as how you said it. But when you go to Damn and you look at like how he did the Grammys, like the performance he did at the Grammys, all that shit, the shit he's talking about. I was just listening to the Damn Never Damn. I'm like, damn, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> no, no pun intended, but like, Everything he's saying is still relevant today, even though it's a four year old fucking album. Butterfly. That's how Pimple Butterfly yeah. is. No, yes. I know. It's just yeah. damn, just sounds better to me. Damn, sonically, it's just better. Yeah. Listen, right now, today, We Gonna Be All Right could be the song of the year. Because <laughs> we gotta have optimism, right? Like, every time we can some tell bullshit happens. Be all right. Every time some bullshit happens, we gonna be all right. We'll try. A hundred percent. Because that was a that's that that was a black anthem, which we didn't get a lot of this year, by the way, but you thought we would have based off the year oh that we just had. Hey, right? hey Charlamagne, don't don't sleep on bigger picture by little baby, man. That, that no, bigger picture was <laughs> crazy. And you know, I, I gotta mention this since we're talking about black anthems. I was as a Cole fan, you know, Cole, one of my favorites ever in life to do it. Don't do it, no, Dollar. I was Don't so do it. disappointed. I can't lie. I was, I was so. Di- I love J Cole. I went to St. John's because of J Cole. I love J Cole, but the songs he dropped this year all disappointed me. And the little response he did with No Name even more disappointment. Then I was even more disappointed in No Name's response because it's like, why would you diss J Cole? Why would you just take that opportunity to make yourself look good and show off your skills, to get your your skill set, and educate the people? Because that's what she was complaining about, them not educated. Mm. Yeah. I'm not mad at Cole, though. Um, I get what you're saying as a, as a, as a, you're just a fan of his, his music. The reason I'm not mad at him is because he's a man at the end of the day. And this is a diff, this has been a difficult year for yeah, a lot of people. And I think um, it's he so just easy. just put an IG post like, yo. I'm hyped well, thinking no. this about to be something to get me through it like a high for hours. Like, I remember when Trump won presidency, I'm feeling disappointed as shit. I'm like, oh, God, whatever. Oh, cold drop, damn, made us make me feel better. And it did. It gave me insight. It's like, you know what? Change it come. You know, he left me with some. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. Now, I feel you because remember when he did the David Letterman, when he did yes. Be Free? On David Letterman, like I ain't gonna front that shit. I, I think it, it brought a tear out of everybody. I, I think that, that's the unfair expectations that artists have sometimes, though. Because like, yes. like Cole might have just he might have been in the crib with the PS Five early and just wanted to chill. <laughs> yes, he might, be depressed, like, <laughs> he might be depressed like the rest of us. He's probably wanted, dealing with anxiety like the rest of us. I don't feel like wait, fucking working. I don't feel like being the voice right now. No, but the funny thing of all this is like when Baby made bigger picture. It was so many people that was going crazy on Cole and Kendrick. Like, y'all let this nigga do what y'all could. Y'all didn't do. Like, they was wilding on them. And I feel like it's just a little bit of fear because while, you know, they did make they make songs about the black plight and our struggle and everything we've gone through, every time, they, and they, when the bat signal goes up, a nigga don't want to put that suit on every time. Yeah. And that's yeah. a fact. And, and 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 also to what you're saying, Wayno, and I want everybody to think about this going, in, going into 2021, because I already see a lot of y'all setting yourself up for failure. Approach 2021 with no expectations. <sighs> don't have any expectations. Don't have any expectations in people. Don't have any expectations in the world. Don't have any expectations for society. Just show up every day and be the best you. Do the best you can. If you go into 2021 with that, 2021 is going to be my <laughs> year. 2021 is going to be the best year ever. 2021 <laughs> is going to be better than 2020. You're going to be fucking disappointed. Oh, Lord. No expectations. Don't have no, why do we, nah, why do we have expectations that's good advice, of people? Also, you know, it's, it's, it's good to manifest. You know? It is. Man, no, 
No, manifest. Once again, let's go back to what I was talking about with the list. Mm -hmm. Don't cast these general broad statements, right, well, about the year. Just say this is gonna be my best year. Well, well, Charlotte, come <laughs> on, man. Like you gotta think about this shit, right? Think about the year as like, and for a lot of people, they be fucking crapping out. You know what I'm saying? Like they they, they might crap out. They might yo shit. This this the year when I hit. Like this is gonna be the year when I hit. I'm not mad at people having like you know um. I want to say not not having expectations because I want people to have a little bit of expectation. It's just that this is the year of un is unpredictability a word? <laughs> like, like this is the year mean. of that. Like you know what I mean, right? This was the year that like for everything we thought it was, it fucking wasn't on like damn near every single level on every level. And I agree with you, but it, I still want people to be a little bit hopeful. But just put some little bit of action behind your hope, you know. But the, the action goes into you. The only thing you can control is you. Yes, you can't even control yes. your circumstances. Right, you you as a human being cannot even control your circumstances. That's every year. What do you say, Nyla? But that's my point. So don't put any unrealistic expectations on the year. So no don't more. Don't put new any year, unrealistic ones. Yeah. No nah. No, no. You, you can do that. So you can the, do the, new the year. Ladies new can, Nyla, you know the, the, the meme that everybody be all the ladies be using with the girl stepping with the bag. They can't use that no more? <laughs> no, you can do New Year, New Me because you're in control of you. So if you want to lose weight, if you want to get smarter, if you want to, you know, start focusing on your mental health, whatever it is, you can make those changes. Right. Everything else you have no control of, so don't have any fucking expectation for it. And I think that's the problem that we have as a society now. We have narratives about people and we have th this narrative causes us to have expectations that just aren't un that just aren't realistic for everybody. Right. Like, motherfuckers really mad at Kendrick. Kendrick should be at the protest. Why? Right. It even, why? Yeah, don't volunteer my services. Was playing anyway. His songs are playing. And guess what? I want Kendrick in the studio working on the songs for the next <laughs> protest. Because yeah. ain't, ain't none of this shit going nowhere. It's going to be more black people that get killed by police. It's going to be... It, so he's going. we're going to need those soundtracks. Nah, I want Kendrick in the studio. I ain't going to lie, Charlamagne. If there's never any other artist that I ever felt more hopeful about like i be like i go through shit and i'd be like damn i'd be like kendrick please say something like i ain't gonna front I, I i really be in the crib like like damn i wish i could just hear what this nigga thinks right now so like when it comes to his music that's one person that i'm i, I don't exactly need him to jump in on everything that's going on but i need something from him because that well, nigga give him is time. Wait, you know why you feel years, that way man. <laughs> you know why you feel that way because he's thoughtful yeah, because he actually fact. takes the time to craft soundtracks for whatever it is that we're going through. So when somebody's that thoughtful, you got to give them time to think. They can't think if you're telling them that they need to be frontline at the goddamn protest. Yeah. Okay, you know and recording. That's all I'm saying. I mean, no, they was, were saying that. Yeah, they were not. Nah, they were saying that, but he did. He did go to like he, he popped up at a few, a oh. few drinks. But I, but salute to everybody who did put themselves on the line for doing that, like like being at the protest because them them shits was irregular. Like the drinks this year was irregular. There was a mixture. So many people where like you might be protesting, but here comes this this idiot that's about to pop off some violence. You know what I mean? Just to do it to the police. Though mm -hmm. they're going to the police, now? trying to like get them riled up. Yeah, yeah and I didn't expect nothing no, in return. That's, yeah, nah. They was like, suck my dick, police, yeah. suck my dick. Come on, yeah, they was please, keep walking, they was keep walking, it's okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead I was going to change the subject. Oh, I was going to say, are you looking forward to Drake's new project? No. I, I forgot about you. Wait. Why not? <laughs> I, I, well, um... For all the same reasons that we're, we're the, for all the same reasons we love Kendrick. Kendrick, uh, Kendrick makes us wait. Kendrick gives us something to look forward to. Kendrick, you know, takes his time. So if he wouldn't I, have I just, dropped Dark Lanes, like, what, you would be interested in this Lover Boy tape. I just don't know what what Drake has given us so much music that I don't know if he has another gear. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we know we know Kendrick has another gear. He shows us that with every project. Drake has given us so much. I don't know if he has another gear, so therefore I'm not looking forward to anything. Mm. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I just don't know. That's the thing I'm going into with no expectation <laughs> because I feel like cert I feel like certified lover boy. Knowing Drake, it makes you think like, oh, this nigga's coming on some crooning sweet shit the whole album, and I I, I don't I don't expect that from him. I I, I, do, I also don't expect him to be making 
like introspective shit. I just I'm really looking for him to just rap. I don't know if he has another gear, but I, I'm just really looking for him to rap. I think that he's his best when he just could fucking rap. When he does them 4 a.m. wherever the fuck he's at. When he does that, like if if he could keep that space for 10 songs, and that, I don't think that that puts him in a different conversation enough. And that's just from a fan of Drake. That's what I would want from him. Let me ask you a question. Are we still in the Drake era? Or is radio um, such 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 a prehistoric form of 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 medium? Is radio such a prehistoric form of media that it hasn't changed the temperature to what's actually going on out here in these streets? We in the little baby era. But I really, that's... really still love Drake the same way they still really, really love the Migos. Cause though I think I'm over it, I don't know if it's because I I hear it all the time because of the field I'm in, but um What what field are you in, Nyla? Radio. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean when I say I mean, radio and I oh. listen, you know, I'm a I'm a radio I'm a I'm a ra- no, I'm just saying I'm a radio guy and I was a radio girl. All I'm simply saying is radio and we have these conversations all the time. They haven't caught up to what's actually going on in the street yet. Right. So they still haven't turned. They haven't changed the temperature. So it, say, it still feels like we're in a Drake era. I don't think we're in a Drake era. I don't think we've been in a Drake era for the past two, three years. And that's why I was going to ask, like y'all yeah. said earlier, like the list, you, uh, Wayno, I think you said, like, nah, shouldn't even be on there. It's like, are we going to get to the point where, like, the Drakes, the Meeks, the Coles, they shouldn't even be on there? And we focus on, you know, the new class, the little babies, the um, little dirks, like you were saying. I think, I, I think now it's just a little bit harder for, like, the, like before I feel like, the radio is what really complimented young up and coming artists. So it's like, you know, now I feel like once an artist gets to a certain place, they don't kind of play. Like, NBA Young Boy should be on the radio. Yes. I mean, like, 100%. It, like NBA Young, 100%. his shit, and I'm talking about like, his shit should be in rotation. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. his shit should be in rotation. Like, I mean, Little Baby, he has like, I mean, he, he's reached a, a new peak. You know what I mean? I think that these artists have forced radio to jump into what they're doing. And by the time radio gets it, it's kind of late. That's why like DSPs is such a big thing. The kids are not, the kids is dictating what they want to hear. I mean, the DSP still kind of dictate with the playlist, but like the kids can go say, nah, I'm not listening to that. I'm going to put this on. Like for me, I grew up, I had to wait. So like I had to wait all day to hear some of my favorite songs listening to the radio. Now kids could just say, this is what I want to hear at that time. And I feel like, the radio needs to follow a little bit with the DSPs do because that's how you not stay current. Not a little bit, not a little bit, a lot. Yeah, I mean every week, every week, new songs should I be agree. put in the rotation. That's a fact. Every like literally every week. That's a fact. Probably that's every few days at this that. point. It would be but literally, hard to track literally every because, week. like you said, there's so much new music to come out, and then music get hot on different platforms now. Like a song could be viral on TikTok. A song could be viral on Twitter. A song could be viral on Instagram. Then you got what's actually hot in the club. Then you got by regions like what's hot in Chicago, what's hot in Atlanta. It's, it's so much. It's so many pockets that it'll be hard to do that. Yeah. So I, I think we would just have to figure out how to. I don't know. We'd have. Yo, Nyla, it should be easier than ever nowadays. The reason it should be easier than ever is because we have actual numbers. Right. You have analytics. You can look at a record and say, oh, shit, this shit is getting listened yeah, to in yeah. 82 countries. This like, kids getting- ain't in the car listening to kids. Those kids who like that stuff on TikTok, they not driving. They not listening to the radio. Well, well, I mean, not that they listen to the radio, but I think that, like, like, see, do you really want to hear in what business- your kids think is hot? Do you really want to hear Baby Shark do, 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 like that shit? No, but 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 see, that's one aspect of it. I think that like oh, for, five. for kids, ki- no, nah, kids dictate what what business is geared to. Like the the kids always dictate what's the next thing to come. And I feel like you know, in in seats in radio, and even I'm I'm in the music industry in executive seats. There needs to be a more transparency with younger people. You know what I'm saying? Like when I look at when I when I look back and I see like how. Or Irv Gotti when he had Murder Inc. or Dame Dash when he had Rockefeller or DMY when they had rock, when they had Rough Riders, they were young guys in the game. I, I feel like mm-hmm. there's not enough cha- there's not enough people champion or they people feel like you got to reach this certain level for them to not get out their seat but put you in a seat under them. There's too much like there's not enough mentorship. There's not enough bringing up. You know what I mean? Like for, for me, I'm I'm about to be 38 years old next week and. I've in my career, I've always had people who've brung me up. Like 
I've known Charlemagne shit 10 years now. Like, he brought me up before we, it was a brilliant idiot. I did a year end wrap up on Power 105 with him. And I was a young, I didn't know shit about media. He just was like, yo, come do this with me. 10 years later, I'm a person in media. So if I don't get that experience at that, when I'm 28, I might not be in the seat I'm That's at at 38. You know what I'm saying? So I think it needs to be just a little bit more, you know, br- while, while I climb the, climb the ladder, I'm bringing so you up. So my question, me. I guess, would be like, where were they, where were the, as they bringing us up? Because there's only so much room. Where are they going to go? No, it's mad. It's wild bread. It's wild. Niggas don't want to come up off that bread. It's mad bread. <laughs> like, you got to start um, making well, my fault is Charlie Makers. I got something I want to add to that. But that's, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I, I just want to, I, I just think like, you know, there's all of these seats, right? Or all of these positions that were made 50 years ago. And it's still the same seats. And it's still, you got to start making new positions. You got to start coming yeah. up with shit. Because Nyla, you, I, I met you coming up, going to the radio station, right? I knew that you DJ, but not only are you DJ, you curate your own playlist. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you do interviews. Are you just a DJ? No, you're not just a DJ. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I do media, but I'm also a, a music executive at a, at a major label. It, it, it is not one name for that. Like it's just two different. Nah, we gotta start coming that's up a, with new shit. We gotta start coming up with new shit. I'm, intern, right. I'm like, yo, yeah, I, Breakfast Club not going nowhere. Angie not going nowhere. Clue not going nowhere. All right, let me <laughs> think. Um, nobody's using their Instagram. Hey, uh, do y'all mind if I every Wednesday I do an interview on y'all Instagram live? Okay, cool. <laughs> and that's that's how I got on. So definitely gotta create your own job. But I guess I'm saying, Man, it, as far as like. I, I think what you're saying about the mentorship thing is right. I think I've been blessed in it because I got people like Charlotte, like Angie, like Thea. But a lot of people don't even have that access to even get through the door. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's so I mean, it, everything y'all saying is absolutely correct. Right. Because I'm, I'm a person that believes um there, there are no gatekeepers anymore because there are no gates. Right. But mm. there are still gatekeepers. You know what I mean? But the problem with the gatekeepers is. The gatekeepers aren't letting the right people in because the gatekeepers don't even know what the qualifications are to be inside. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? The gatekeepers are still using old blueprints and they're still using old metrics. So when these new people come in, that should absolutely be on the inside and absolutely be the new gatekeeper standing there right alongside of you. You're still looking down on them because of your old perception. But also, yes, yes. But then there's also a lot of new gatekeepers that ain't even valid in any way. Just out here, <laughs> just. But, but, but how do you get valid? Not like you don't get valid till you get the experience. What yeah. makes you valid? Like I, like I'm the type of person I validate every. I I feel like everybody's opinion of, is valid if it's a good opinion. Like I'm just listening to what somebody says. When I hear Wayno, Wayno, is just as sharp now as he was ten years ago when I heard him. Ain't shit mm. change. That's why I'm like, yo, damn Wayno, let's go, let's go talk shop, let's go talk shop right. about this. You know what I mean? Well, so it's just like you have to hear people. Like, I, what what validates you other than having strong opinions? Well, I think you know another thing is is like for me being in the space I'm in and in the space that you're in is being able to see shit in people that they might not see in themselves. You know, um, Word. like I I feel like that's another thing when it comes to this generation. This generation is the I ain't doing it. If I ain't getting paid, I'm not pulling up. I'm not doing that shit. I don't need this job. I could go do something else. And the thing is, I feel like there's, there's people want to skip the grind too much. I feel like there's too many people that That's really want to skip the grind. You know what I mean? Like the, the grind, I, I tweeted this one day. I said, like, you can't, you can't skip the, skip the grind. If you, if you do, eventually you have to start over. And so many people took the wrong thing from it. Oh, it's nothing wrong with starting over. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with starting over. I'm saying that like, if you try to skip the grind and you think you're going to go into this space, you're eventually going to have to go through the process of what it takes to get in that space. Now, I also don't think that getting into these spaces should be as difficult as it is. I feel like, you know, a lot of people got to get over their egos and try to not hold people in a certain space to say, well, oh, Nyla, I mean, yeah, you've been doing this shit for two years, but I, I, it took me 10. So you going, it's going to have to take you 10 for me. To, no, if you're good and you and, and you're like Charlamagne said, if you're sharp and you understand, you should have a seat. Why well, not? I'm gonna say this man, when it comes to man, the whole what, valid thing. Valid isn't saying like having an opinion, just having a strong opinion makes you valid. But everybody, everybody has a strong opinion on Twitter. Everybody has a strong opinion on you. Everybody is true. saying something, and everybody feels their shit is strong. So that's why it's like valid to me. It's just actually knowing your shit. You know what I mean? So many people are just based right. off. Yeah. Of 
and you know what you're talking about. all types of yeah, other yeah. just extra things when really at the core of it, you know, it's about the music. Right. Yes. If, if, if you hear somebody and you can tell that person knows what they're talking about, to me, that's that person's opinion is valid. I get yeah, Nile is absolutely right. Everybody got a strong opinion. That don't make right. it valid. But if you absolutely know what you're talking about, and even if I don't agree with you, but but your POV is sharp and it's informed yeah. and you're, you're standing on what you're saying and it's making me think, I'm like, because there's people huh, with strong opinions that be buying out bullshit and people be eating the bullshit. Oh, uh, like that shit, Kate. That's why I just. No, everybody, yo, everybody's immediate. Yo, everybody. Th- that was the gift and the curse of me ending up on a platform because it was like when I got there, I never viewed myself as being there. But like everybody felt like I was in inval- like a lot of people that have been do- doing this shit for years felt like I was invalid and I didn't deserve to be in a certain position. But like they'll come up with the most outrageous reasons why they should be in the seat. And I just think that like getting into certain spaces, it's, a, it's a, of course has something to do with being valid, but also how you position yourself. A lot of people don't think about that, like positioning yourself. You know what I mean? If you if you're able to get in the rooms, getting around the right people and and presenting something, that's another thing. Everybody, a lot of people want to do shit, but don't got nothing to present. They just feel like, yo, I, I got an opinion. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, I, you should have me oh, on there. Like, all right, like, right. <laughs> well, that, well, well, that's our fault though. That's our fault because we make this shit look easy. You know what I'm saying? And people are like, you talk about the process. That's why, shameless plug, my first book, Black Privilege. I got a chapter called Put the Weed in the Bag because it goes back to belly when them two kids were sitting there with Nas and DMX. And he was like, we want to go out there and get money. And X was like, no, motherfucker, put the weed in the bag first. Right. People always want to skip the process. So they don't know Wayno used to manage artists. Right. They don't know Wayno used to intern at Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? They don't know Nyla used to intern at Power 105. They don't know Nyla used to be Angie's assistant. They think that y'all just came out of nowhere. Yeah. And now y'all got these positions and y'all get the motherfucking talk and, you know, people care about what y'all say. No, y'all earn that. Right. That's y'all fair. earn that by, by the work y'all was putting in. And, and also to Wayne, to your point with about ego, man, yes, there is so many people who have been sitting in these seats for so long whose ego simply won't allow them to say, I don't know. I salute my man Sean Peckers all the time, man. And the reason I salute Sean Peckers, because Sean Peckers said something years ago when he left Def Jam. And that shit still rings true to me to this day. Sean Peckers said they were all in a conference room and they were debating about what Logic was going to do on his first week. Logic's first album. Mm -hmm. And everybody had these mad low numbers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, he's going to do 10,000, 15,000, whatever, whatever. He said when Logic came back and did, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand the first week, he was like, it's time for me to step away. Because mm. I just don't know how to mm. gauge this shit. Mm. Salute. And that to me was, I, sal- yeah. I salute him on that. Right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily know. I don't necessarily think he should have walked away because he has such expertise. But that's when you bring in the people around you. And as y'all said, create positions for them. Right. To keep you sharp. Absolutely. Simple, simple as that. Simple as that. Like, I don't I don't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say he should have walked away. But just the fact that he had the wherewithal, because so many people can't be honest with themselves about that shit. Well, and just simply say, man, yeah. I don't fucking know. Well, I mean, his walk away was irregular. That nigga walked away into Rock Nation Sports and <laughs> started bringing in Lonzo Balls and LaMelo Balls and all these other people. So he, you know, it might have been best for him to walk away and to pivot into sports. But I, I definitely get what True. you're saying. That's all I'm saying is just like, yo, you got to let go of your ego and just know when you don't know anymore. And I think it's so many people in these positions of power in various industries, radio, the record industry, they just don't know. And they're afraid to say they yeah. don't know. Yeah. And because and, and, that shit is different. Yo, it's different when you got to go through your regular midlife crisis as a human <laughs> and you got to go through a midlife crisis in this motherfucking industry. You know what Ooh. I mean? Like that shit will drive. That shit will make that you fucking go crazy. <laughs> Yo, oh, but, you know, so oh, you but you know, I think that the way people stop knowing is because they get away from younger, younger people. And that, that's the thing is like what I, I was, yo, when I was at Rockefeller, I was the young kid that like, I could remember any, I could remember damn near any and everybody's verse. So people be like, yo, who said this or who used this beat for that? So they kept me around for shit. And I feel like when I was younger, I kept the older guys young. Like they, they was in to the new slang. Now, shit, me. I, my son be saying shit. I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, you know what I mean? Like certain, certain slang of words, but I stay around like younger people 
just to learn. But I think the biggest problem is that people my age or older or even a little bit younger than me feel like once you reach a certain place, you can't no longer young, learn from the youth. I think the, the youth, I mean, man, fucking who said it? I believe the children of the future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Like, that's a real ass fucking line. Uh, Whitney, Whitney, Whitney Houston. Houston, nigga. Right. How do you mean who said it? I couldn't think, I couldn't <laughs> think too fast, but Whitney Houston said that. But now that's some real shit, though. If you, if, 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 if I'm going to defer to Nyla to learn about what's going on because she's at the shit that I ain't at as far as music. Word. You know what I'm saying? And it might be some knowledge I might have up here, but if you, if, if we start sharing, then we good. But if I'm like, if I, if I have this ego where I'm like, Nah, I can't talk, man. This motherfucker 20 some years old. What the fuck do they know? You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's the game. Yeah, yeah. The game is full. The game when it comes to the money and the positions is full of a bunch of people sitting in seats like these young niggas don't know nothing until they do. And then all you try to do is hire them so that you can control. Yeah. Them. And that's why the young niggas don't respect. Exactly. You. And that's why. That's why. That's why. That's why. You know, your, your source of anxiety as an older person, the reason you feel in, inadequate is because you know you've been shitting on these young people. Right. You know they don't respect, you know you don't respect them. So now that they giving you back what you put out, you feel all insecure and shit. <laughs> no, motherfucker, you should have embraced them from the start. That's a fact. Like I was telling Nala this shit the other day. I love music. I love hip hop, but I can't keep up with all this shit. Right. It's impossible. <laughs> I'm a fucking husband. I got three kids. I got companies to, to run. I got all types of shit going on, personally and professionally. I can't keep up with it. So how do I cut through the noise? Nyla, what's hot? What should I be listening to? Right. You know what I mean? Well, you know, what you fucking with? Right. Or, 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 or if it's people that I respect, if I see them post some shit, I'm gonna go listen. Right. That, that's how I discover new shit. Right. Cut through the that's noise. That's how I discover new shit. Cut through the motherfucking noise. Um, let's take a break and come back. I want to talk about a couple more things. Um, before before we get out of here. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second, pay some bills here. Look, it's the holiday season, okay? And the holiday season sure knows how to lighten your wallet. For many families, December is one of the most expensive months of the year, not to mention the busiest. So if you're looking for a fast pace and easy way to put some money back into your pocket, why not reshop your home and auto insurance rates with Policy Genius? This is a no-brainer. Policy Genius combines a cutting-edge insurance marketplace with help from licensed experts to save their home and auto customers an average of $1,000 per year. Better yet, it's really simple to use. First, just head to policygenius.com and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius literally does the rest. They'll compare rates from over 30 top insurers from progressive to nationwide to find the lowest rates. Their licensed experts will look all the ways to maximize your savings, including bundling your home and auto policy. If Policy Genius finds a better rate than what your per current policy is offering, you know what? They'll get you switched for free. That's the kind of service that has earned Policy Genius a five star rating across 1,600 reviews on Trustpilot and Google. So if you're feeling the holiday pinch, Find out how much you could save on home and auto insurance at policygenius.com. They've saved home and auto insurance customers an average of $1,000 a year by reshopping. That's Policy Genius. When it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. Now, let's get back to the show. All right, listen, salute to everybody out there going through this stressful ass holiday season, man. I mean, 2020 was stressful, period. But, you know, the holidays is when a lot of people's anxiety and depression starts to go through the roof, okay? So if you need stress relief that goes beyond quick fixes, you need to reach out to Headspace. Headspace is your daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations and an easy to use app. Headspace is the is the only meditation app advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. So whatever the situation, Headspace really can help you feel better. OK, you're overwhelmed. Headspace has a three minute SOS meditation for you. You need some help falling asleep. Headspace has wind down sessions. All right. Their members swear by. And for parents, Headspace even has morning meditations you can do with your kids, all right? Headspace's approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. Headspace is backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, all right? 600,000 five-star reviews and over 60 million downloads. Headspace makes it easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule, anytime, anywhere. You deserve to feel happier and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash idiots. That's headspace.com slash idiots for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash idiots today. Now let's get back to the show. Real quick church announcement. 
Um, everybody go out there and watch Show Saves America on Netflix if you haven't yet. Um, it was trending uh, number one at one point on 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 Netflix. So go check that out. Um, I like to see Andrew doing exactly what I thought he was going to do, which is piss people off. So so salute to him on that. And everybody go out there and pre-order Tamika Mallory's State of Emergency. Uh, her book will be out um, May 11th, 2021, but it's available for pre-order right now, wherever you buy books, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, go support our good system. It, it, it made me think about what um, y'all were saying earlier about the artists who were on, who are supposed, who y'all thought was supposed to be on the front lines this year. They weren't, but people like Tamika Mallory was because she's always been throughout her whole life. But it's like, she's become a star now. You know what I mean? She's getting mentioned in Beyonce records and all of these different artists want to put her on her albums. I think she was on T.I.'s album this year and Jeezy's album. So it's just like, you know, salute to, salute to Tamika for, for doing the work. I don't need Kendrick Lamar to be on the front lines when we have people who actually do that work. And people who actually do that work, I think they should be re rewarded just like the fucking rappers. Right. You know what I mean? They should be celebrated just yeah, like the motherfucking rappers. She's definitely getting her flowers in the world Absolutely. She definitely is. Different she types of um, music penetrates differently. That's all I'm saying. But we, we do need those voices to represent us and speak. Absolutely. Right. Now, I want to talk to y'all about what everybody thought was going to happen on um. Again, our superpowers. Mine's came. Um, oh, Lord. Yo. Listen, <laughs> I love black people. You know what I'm saying? I love us. And I love that we're so optimistic. And I love that, you know, we're always looking for ways to get out of bad situations. Have things gotten so bad for black people that now we hoping for superpowers? It, no, it shit <laughs> been that bad. bad. It's been that bad, dog. <laughs> Yo, we always, we always wishing on a fucking star, dog. Wishing on a fucking <laughs> star, oh, man. Something to fake look forward to, honestly. No, it's like, no, remember in like 2012 in like May, I remember people were saying that the world was going to yeah. end and it was all these people that was doing all this shit like, yo, the rapture is coming this day. I just wish that, I, I, like, because the thing about it is that when shit like that happens, we become a part of the conversation and we will make that conversation go, right? That conversation, that conversation will go, it will train, trend, we can do whatever yeah. with it. I just wish that we could, we would do it for <laughs> other shit. You know what I'm saying? Just, yes. just for other shit. That's yes. all. Do it for shit that actually matters. Right. Listen, I'm not, I, at first I was looking at it. I'm like, okay, that's a funny joke. You know, the great, uh, the great conjunction is happening, whatever, whatever. I get it. You know what I mean? But then I'm starting to look like, wait a minute, man. This motherfucker's really looking forward to this shit. You know what I mean? We got to stop doing this to people. That shit is traumatizing. Do you know how traumatizing shit like Christmas is for poor people? <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. So that, so that's what, that's what we're, that's what we did with this superpower shit. Motherfucker was really, really looking forward to this shit. I saw it. Nah, Man, people I'm was, you telling know. you, they were. Can I say something about it? Oh, God. No. Your, your superpower is interrupting. <laughs> Go ahead, Taylor. <laughs> I, why can it be looked at as another type of power? Like, why does it have to be about getting indiv invisible and ever, or something like that? Like, why can it be like embracing your like new mental health? Or I don't know. Like, why can't that? Yeah, because it, because it wasn't rooted in that. It wasn't rooted I, in that. Yeah, why couldn't we change it that way? With a superpower, I'm going to just have a positive mindset that day that I know the universe is on my side. Like, Yeah, I, like... No, listen, that's that's a consolation prize. People just want to oh just wanna say, like, oh, I ain't get it, so I, let me feel better about it. I feel like the thing is... Oh I, started, I see some shit that, that NLE Chopper has said, and all I, you know, all I wrote in, in Say Cheese comments was, where does he get his information from? And people what? like, what? You fucking idiot. It's in all of the books. It's in the Bible and it's that and the third. And I'm like, yo, dog, I think that people got to start interpreting things as more metaphorical than literal. Because if we believe yeah. everything that was literal, then we would be already be living in a superhero world based on the shit that people said yeah. years ago. I just think a lot of people had great imaginations and were good at writing and, and making some shit up to say, this is how you interpret it. Don't take this shit as literal because every time something like this happens, people out there like, damn, I it's people that really thought they was going to get superpowers. I promise. Yes. I don't think to Nyla's point, to Nyla's point, you don't need Jupiter to, to twerk on Saturn or whatever the fuck it was in order to feel like you can change your mindset. They said twerk? Like you can right. do that. You can, no, you can you're right. Anything. I'm just saying like, 
you could just switch it around for December 21st. That's all. I, I don't really think anybody was out there really looking for some powers, but I no, they were, they were, they were. Yes, they were. <laughs> Niggas is looking for anything. If we, if people was out here looking for Kendrick Lamar to be Martin Luther King, you damn sure believe that they looking for superpowers, bro. I bet you if I search right now, I bet you if we do a quick Google search, we will find somebody who actually died trying to jump off a roof thinking that they could fucking fly on December 21st. That's a fact. Guaranteed. That's a fact. I'm Listen, all I'm simply saying is you don't need um, things like the Great Conjunction to believe that you have some extraordinary ability to change your circumstance. I promise you, you can change your circumstance with just your thoughts. We ain't even tapped into our regular human powers yet. Our God-given powers, but y'all looking for superpowers. Yeah, we don't... Fuck all what, that. What's the portion of our brain that's not used? Forgot that... Like, a lot. It's a lot of your brain that's, like, that's not used, right? It's like... How, how, what's the percentage? It's some crazy percentage that you'd be like, damn, if I, I can figure out how to use all of that. Yeah, I want to say it's 75, but I'm not sure. I know it's something crazy that you think like, damn, we don't use that much of our brain. Like... Yeah, I don't know how much it is, but all I'm simply saying is we can uh, tap into our own abilities. And I want everybody to feel like that going into 2021. I don't I don't want nobody to feel disappointed because they didn't get so-called superpowers on December 21st. You already powered the fuck up. All right. All you got to do is start making better choices. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You start making better choices in your life. You will access all the goddamn superpowers you, you want. You know, a lot of That's people, just, though, environment plays a, a key in how you feel and feeling empowered. So if you're around a lot of shit that doesn't make you feel empowered, people ain't going to believe that they have those type of superpowers. Well, 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 let me give you a superpower. If, if you can't change the way, if you can't change um, your circumstances, change the way you look at them. Mm. You know what I mean? Change your perspective on them. Ain't, no, ain't none of us from great situations. We well, ain't no grew up in the hood in Harlem. Yeah. I grew up on a dirt road in Monk's County, South Carolina, in a single wide trailer. The only thing that allowed me to even dream the, 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 my, my, my current reality is simply my mindset. Mm. That, and that's, that's the ultimate thing you can plan in a person. Fuck, fuck uh, telling them they're going to get superpowers on the December 21st. Plant that seed in them to tell them, like, yo, you can transcend this circumstance. That's a fact, but a lot of people don't even want, like, that's the difficult thing, is trying to plant the seed in people who don't have the right soil. You feel me? Like, mm. it, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of times, because I have this conversation with a lot of, like, like, I'm out the hood, but I'm not far removed. So it's like a lot of different people come to me for advice and certain shit, and you be telling a person shit and they could tell you their circumstances, whatever the case may be. And you can give them like the guidelines on certain shit. And end of the day, a lot of niggas just want you to just give them a book bag full of money. You know what I mean? Like that, they, they, they want you to just hit the lotto for them and trying to change somebody's mindset is a very difficult task. Yo. It's a, it's a very, yes. very difficult task. But I promise you when you change the, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. I oh, promise yeah. you that. You know what I mean? Like, I promise you, like, I, I love being from where I'm from because being where I'm from put things inside of me that made me be able to see the world from a different from a different view than others. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes right. when you see the world only through the lens of privilege or you see the world, you know, only through a lens of of riches and finance, you miss all of the other little small details that really make this shit go. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? That's a fact. Like I, I, when you come from where we come from, like you focus a lot on more of the the, the micro than the macro. Mm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And so, 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 so that's 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 all I would encourage people to do, man. Because I don't want nobody to be disappointed as so many kids are going to be uh, tomorrow when Christmas comes. Mm. You know what I mean? I think telling motherfuckers that Santa Claus is real is criminal. Yeah. And I think people should be arrested for Look. lying. The generations of kids about Santa Claus. Yo, I told my, I told my daughter like my youngest daughter is eight, and I told I, I I told it to my son and my other daughter too. I was like, yo, listen, I don't want y'all to think that there's white people out here giving you free shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that <laughs> that that's the whole concept of, of of Christmas. It's like you know, I remember when I found out it wasn't no Santa Claus, I was fucking hurt because my mom would she would leave the wood. I was I, first of all, I didn't have a chimney, so you know all the Alvin and the Chipmunk shit you watching, you thinking. I just right. my my mom was like he climbed up the fire escape. That's what my mom was saying. Like yo, he climbed up the fire escape. Wow. She would bite the cookie. I mean, she would go all out. And then as I got older, 
Like, as I got older, I'm just like, yo, I don't want my kids believing that it's this white nigga coming to the hood that's giving giving you shit just for performing well. Because you could perform well for a lot and shit is not going to go your way. And I feel like subconsciously... Imagine- my fault, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was about to go say ahead. subconsciously, not that you're going to believe in Santa Claus, but you start to take on some of them traits when you're growing up thinking that just because you're doing what you're supposed to do, that things will always just be fair. And that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? And you imagine what that does to your fucking self-esteem. When you a little kid and they tell you all you got to do is make this list, you know what I'm saying? And you're going to get everything you want on Christmas. What if the shit that you really want ain't even about no toys? Nigga, you just want your parents to be able to pay the rent. You tired, you done been evicted two, three times as a child. You just want your parents to be able to pay the motherfucking rent. So you writing out this list, you turn it into Santa Claus, and then somebody tells you, oh, well, you didn't get what you want because you weren't nice. So I, you didn't. You, you imagine what that does to your self-esteem. Yo, I like. Yo, I, I never like, believed in Santa, so I don't really know. And that, you shouldn't. My mom told me that it was Santa, but then it would be like her handwriting on on a present. So I just wasn't. I just was <laughs> picking up everything. So I never really believed in it. One and then two, I don't think it's something that I would pass down because if I'm spending my hard earned money on it, you gonna know who really loves you. It's me because I paid for it. That's how. I yes. So it's like. The thing that killed me with Christmas was it was like this is after I found out because I don't I don't celebrate Christmas due to my religion. But besides that, it was like it was one time I was around like 14 years old. My mom, we had like we had moved out the the, the projects. I mean, not the project. We moved out the shelter into a building. And, you know, we this finally our first home. We had went through three shelters in a year. This and the third. And I came in the room and my mom was crying. And I'm like, yo, mom, what you crying for? And she was like, she said, after I paid all the bills, I can't do nothing for you and your sister for Christmas. That shit lit me up just first to see my mom in pain. Secondly, for her to be upset that she can't buy me something on this fucking fake ass holiday. You know what I mean? Mm. I I just was like, I was, I was so hurt about it. It made, it left a bad taste for me with with, with Christmas. And I just was like, eh, you know, I don't knock people who who do that. that. Did that lead you to selling crack? No, no. Listen, man, I don't talk about no drugs, none of that. I ain't, ain't leave me to selling crack. But no, it, what it did to me. need you to stick it up anybody? No, nah, it, it didn't. What it did make me feel, though, it, it did put a fire under me that made me want to change my mother's circumstances one day. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I watched my mom, like, my mom was, like, into design and shit. And it's like, I watched my mom make dresses. She took me to a fashion show one time. And I asked, I'm like, yo, why'd you stop doing that? And she was like, because I had to take care of you and your sister. So and I'm like. How fucking sad is that to give up on your dreams because you have kids? Because I didn't give up on my dreams because I had kids. You know what I mean? Like, wow. I just pushed forward towards mine. And fortunately enough, like, it's a, a, a high risk, a high reward that I'm able to monetize the things that I planned on doing. But, like, for, I, I thought it was so sad that my mom kind of gave up on herself in a sense so that she could take care of me and my, uh, my sister. So all of that. Whenever she couldn't do for us, I just was like, I, I, it didn't matter to me. What mattered is that we just was family. Yeah, I salute, I salute your mother for keeping it, keeping it one hundred, man. Because that whole reason for the season stuff, that's bullshit. Yeah, don't let nobody tell you that Christmas ain't lit. Christmas is only lit when you're rich. All right, <laughs> Christmas is lit when you can afford. Christmas is lit when you can afford to do all of the things that come with Christmas. When you got the big ass Christmas trees and you can decorate your house and you can afford to buy people whatever the fuck they want to buy for Christmas. Don't let nobody tell you different. I grew up Jehovah's Witness, so I never celebrated Christmas. Right. And we was poor. It was already poor, so I never felt the poorness aspect of it only because I just knew we were Jehovah's Witnesses. So I never was tripping. You know what I'm saying? The only time I ever got mad about it was fourth grade when Miss Freeman who was a devil to this day. I don't know why. So I, started, I need to find out what happened to Miss Freeman because I've been thinking about her a lot lately. She motherfucking got mad at me because I said in class that Santa Claus isn't real. And then she said, you just feel like that because you're a Jehovah's Witness. And just because y'all don't celebrate Christmas, don't try to bring down everybody else's joy. She went crazy. That shit, went crazy. That, shit, that shit made me feel like, well, damn, fuck the kingdom all then. You know what I mean? But the moral of the story is that reason for the season stuff, no. Jesus don't even care about Christmas because y'all don't really care about Jesus on Christmas. Yeah, I, when have y'all mentioned? Have y'all mentioned Jesus at all this week? Let me tell you something. It's so funny. Well, I got so many questions because like, it's so funny, right? Just speaking about Jesus, we, we all everybody believes that Jesus is black. But have you ever met a black person named Jesus before? I've never met a black person named Jesus in my entire life, not once. Or a white person named been, Jesus. I've never met a white person. Might have been named Latino. Jesus. Or black. That's what I'm saying. The only person I've ever met named Jesus. might have been Latino. But beyond that, I was gonna say, yo. When Christmas comes, 
Ari and fucking Moneybag Yo, Jada and Lil Baby, Quavo and Sweetie gonna have all a lot of people in their feelings because a lot of people gonna be thinking that that's how they should, should be, just, not knowing that these niggas is rich beyond belief. Nigga, Quavo got Sweetie a Bentley. <laughs> I saw I saw that this morning. And then yesterday I saw Quavo got himself a a, a Maybach truck. Then the other day I saw Sweetie buy herself a private jet. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's Merry Motherfucking Christmas. <laughs> okay. All that shit. If a motherfucker got to tell you, that, hey, man, it's not about that. It's about the reason for the season. They need to keep it real with you like Wayne Old Mom did and just tell you straight up, like, look, we just can't afford to do it. Yeah. Yeah, listen. You just going to do it. That's just the truth to the matter. Just that's just the it. fucking truth to the matter. Um, I think that's it. Unless it, is there anything else y'all want to discuss? Mm. Not really. We tackled a lot today. Y'all taking the vaccine? I, I I gotta know a few niggas that get it. <laughs> I gotta know some niggas that get it and watch them over six months before I do it. I don't know. I gotta do it. I, I can't. I can't just jump into the fire yet, man. Because I never took no vac. I don't. I never took no flu shot or none of that in my life. I'm not yeah, saying that that's not cool, one way. I just you know, you know. Though, right? Yeah, I got the chicken pox when I was a kid. You only get that once though. But it's like when we. It's not one way. My fault, guy. Every white doctor I know, every white doctor I know since September has told me, don't take the COVID-19 You're vaccine. Lying. Until, I, I promise I you. I need some of you because I be feeling like this is conspiracy theory shit. I promise you. Until, no, they didn't say don't take it. They said just don't take it until like next summer or something. Don't take the one that comes out in the fall and the one that gets made available to the public in March or April. They was telling like when I first got my first COVID test, when we came back in the city, um, when the, to because we had to go into the studio that day when I announced the black effect. Like we had to do a COVID test and the guy that gave me the COVID test, he was a doctor. He was like, don't, if the, when, if the vaccine comes out this fall, don't even think about messing with it till next summer. So them shits my, is doc, like, my doctor. Like, I was about to say, them shits is like the first batch of PlayStation 5s. Like, like don't buy the first batch because they got bugs in them. <laughs> I, worked the I worked the bugs out. Last Friday, I'm not going to say the doctor's name because this is one of my doctors and I don't know if I'm even supposed to be revealing this. She, sh she shaves my corns, right? Because I got a corn on my right pinky toe. And so, like, every six months, I got to go get a shot in it and get it shaved off because I don't want to have the surgery, not for a corn. I just rather go get it shaved. So I went and got it shaved last week. And she said the same thing. She said, she said, Lenard, you're not going to get that vaccine, are you? I said, well, no, nah, it's not available till like, March or April. She said, nope, 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 don't even get it then. She said, wait till the summer or wait till next fall. She said, they called me. But she's a doctor. She was like, they called me to come get it. And I told them, no, nah, I'm going to wait. So I'm listening to the white doctors. Did you see that lady that took it and passed out? I did. And they and they said that wasn't because of the vaccine. The so, hell, it wasn't. Well, well, yeah, what was it? <laughs> what was it? Then? I don't know. That's that what I'm saying. If it wasn't the vaccine, then I was I was I was reading about that. They were saying like that's one of the side effects of some vaccines. Vaccines do do that to people at times. I'm like, I've never heard that in my life. I've never mm -hmm. heard somebody say they took a vaccine and they fainted. Bye. You know? He said what? I don't. I don't know, man. He might. That, I don't know, man. Did he? <laughs> Um, we don't know. Oh, I saw this. You saw this? Where it was like the vaccine was the, the the syringe was empty. Yeah, it's just like. But you know what? I, you know why I said did Biden take it? Because remember that shit when when Obama was in Flint and he faked like he sipped the water. Did you see that? Oh, that was fucked up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that exactly. Like I, I don't that. know, man. I don't trust that. none of these niggas, man. I need to see somebody I know that take the shit and they don't grow an extra arm or something. <laughs> Listen, I, I, the way I look at it is like this. Um, they said they need 70% of the population to take it in order for, you know, it to be effective. It's more than enough white people. 70% <laughs> is more than enough white people. Go ahead. Knock yourself out, white folks. Go out there, take it, tell us how it is. We'll be over here fine doing our Dr. Sebi stuff, wearing our mask, washing our hands, making sure our immune system is strong. Go out there and do your thing. I agree. That's what I say about it. Honestly, Atlanta, Florida, Florida are thriving just fine. That's what it looked like to me. Nala, you just left there, right? Yeah. You still in Atlanta? I've been in Atlanta a few times, too. I ain't mask out, out there. there. I, I had a mask. they like, you don't need that? I'm like, going to see. I'm like, oh, I don't. Okay. I'm going around. Yo, fine. Regular life. They just They was taking your taking your um the your temperature, mm -hmm. right? I went to a few places in Atlanta and they was like to sit down and eat, they just take your temperature. That was it. I, I would still wear my mask though now. I hope you still was wearing your mask. I, I did wear my mask. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Cause you gotta you're right, yeah. You gotta look at it like yeah, sex. Right. You wouldn't just take a nigga's word if he's like, yo, I'm clean. You know what I mean? No, 
nobody had a mask on. Nobody anywhere. Except for like certain stores in a mall, like in Linux, they was like, can you put it up? So it'd be like, all right. But like walking around, oh, you, nobody had a mask on. And you went to what Linux? Yeah, I went to Linux and I didn't get shot. To the shooting right. range. <laughs> yeah, everything was fine. Everybody was like, you had no, Linux. You, I'm like, Nala, you know what's so crazy about Linux though? When you was walking through there, right? Because every time I go there, I'd be in there by myself. It's mad police. A in lot. There. It's a lot yeah. of police. Every somebody told me. They told me that the violence is happening in those malls because a lot of the other malls' stores got shut down. So, therefore, everybody is coming to those two malls in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it, it never it never used to be like that. There was a mall where certain people used to go to, and now that those stores are closed, everybody has to come to these two particular malls. I think it's Linux and I forgot the other one, but they say that's what's causing, like, a lot of the problems. Uh, but it was jam-packed, and the lines was dumb. Yo, Louie had the line, like, down on. Yeah, the Louis line be crazy. crazy. I, crazy. I don't get it. That's the only thing I like about all this. You got to get on the line to go to fucking Champ Sports. Like, who wants to do that? I really, I'm an all shopper. I don't want to go nowhere if I don't got to. Shit, I, don't, I ain't been in a yeah. mall in years, and I don't plan to, because I don't spend my money yeah. on silly shit like that. Plus, I get mad free shit, so it's like, whatever. Question. So, for the new year, you know, or for Christmas, you know, I would like a gift. And the gift that I'm asking is for, I want a good finance book. Mm. A good finance mm-hmm. book? Like financial literacy. Um, A good finance book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Not that one. I read that. Oh, you, re- you read that yeah. already? Um, The Color of Law. The, the Color of Law is good. You ever read The Color of Law? No, I'm going to put it in my notes. The Color of Law is good. Um, Well, you know what? The color of law is good, but it's more so about how the government segregated America, but it does leak into the financial aspect. I'll send you some stuff when we get Okay, off. cool. I'll send you some stuff when we get off. Listen, Wayno, thank you. Nyla, appreciate thank you. Thank you for um, having us. Y'all got, any, y'all got anything y'all want to plug? <laughs> that means, damn, <laughs> wow. So it's the holidays. Y'all don't have nothing to do? I'll be on air Christmas Day at Power 1051. Make sure y'all tune in because, you know, I'm doing a okay. special, um, you know, podcast dropping. More podcasts dropping in January. So stay tuned for that on Instagram at Nyla Simone. Yep. I'll keep you updated. Wayno, you don't want to tell us about your moves, your next moves, even though I don't know why everybody act like, you know, everyday struggle was your bread and butter. Right. It absolutely <laughs> positively wasn't. It's very Wayno was doing so much before everyday struggle. Like, yes. Yeah, I ain't just start getting money. That's what people, the people, that's a lot of people's misconceptions. Like, oh, you, that's when you started. Nah. Um, nah, man, I I, I want to plug some stuff, but I ain't, I, the ink ain't dry yet, man. I ain't signed yet. But oh, yeah, but that, don't, well, don't worry about it. Just say, just say, stay tuned. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. No, all. but I don't want to give expectations out. That's what you said. Don't get. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't get yeah, expectations. Yeah. We don't know how this shit is gonna go. Shit, the L. But your day job, you, you're you're an A and R. Your day job, oh, yeah, you're I A&R. mean, I'm, you know, A and R at Asylum. You know, I'm gonna be uh, jumping a little bit back heavy on the management side. I got some new clients. I got this kid. I'm about to sign. I, I don't. Even, I'm not I'm even gonna talk about this kid. Oh yeah, well, Sada Baby, you know we going we drop a Sada Baby album next year, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 just staying busy, man. Well, I'm chilling for the rest of the year because this has been a very exhausting year for me and my family. So I'm just gonna take the the next couple of days to just chill out, you know, reflect and and decompress and just chill out and 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 appreciate life. But um, yeah, 2021. Hope all goes well because it, unless the aliens land on the first, you know what I mean, like. At this point, that's the only thing that could that could happen. I'd be surprised about is the aliens land in the middle of Times Square. We need that. <laughs> we do. We definitely do. Yeah, the Earth need that humbling. I'm all for that. Like I, I think that we have this once again. We have this expectation that the aliens are going to be angry or evil or bad. Like no, they just might be here to be like y'all been fucking this shit up, man. Let me man. show y'all how to get this shit pop. Shit, you know what I mean? Like, Let me show y'all how to fucking replenish your planet. Listen, they, they might come with a new stimulus check. You know what I'm saying? Get niggas right Word. for real. <laughs> like our teacher, I mean, let me teach y'all how to get this climate change thing right. Yo, y'all still beefing over skin color looking different. Like they might, they might get just us start, all they might hit something on their watch and it change every skin color to every, like I could do this shit all day. Changes to every type of person all day. <laughs> Word up. Word up. Nyla, Wayno, appreciate y'all as always. If you think uh we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>